What gives Bitcoin its value? Scarcity is the answer that most people would give, as seen frequently when joining such online discussions. First, what even is scarcity? Scarcity refers to the basic fact that there is only a finite amount of certain human and non-human resources. In other words, when something is scarce, there is a limited availability of that commodity, and when something is abundant, there is more than enough of it available. The next logical question would be whether we will ever run out of Bitcoin to buy. Thanks to the genius design of Bitcoin, the answer to that question is thankfully no. What do you mean, you might ask? There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. Well, we know that Satoshi Nakamoto created fractional units the size of 100 millionths of a Bitcoin, and these units were later named Satoshis. Therefore, you could even jokingly say that Bitcoin is just a made-up name for 0.1 Giga Satoshis, or 100 million Satoshis. This divisibility of a Bitcoin is important because it allows the system to scale according to the demands of the user base. In fact, even smaller units such as milli Satoshis are already being used by the Lightning Network right now. Scarcity can even be a bad thing. Let's take ancient Rome, for example. People of the past needed scarce materials such as precious metals to make currencies that were very difficult to counterfeit. Even if you melted down the coins, the underlying metals would have similar perceived value. However, when the silver and gold mines of the Roman Empire started running dry, this created huge problems for the Roman economy. This eventually led to massive inflation after other metals were mixed into the coinage which threw more fuel into the fire of the empire's collapse. Gold is very divisible as well, one might say. So how is gold scarce if its smallest units are atoms? Well, there are some problems with that. First of all, coins the size of atoms would not have been very practical, especially in the Roman Empire. However, the reason why gold could not be revalued, as there was less of it available for everyone, was that it already had a universally accepted value all around the world. The Roman mines might have run dry, but there were other places that had plenty of it. Therefore, any attempt to give gold coins a new value would have been fruitless because Rome was not a hermetically sealed system, so cheaper gold would have been flowing into the empire from other places. The protection from counterfeiting that the scarcity of gold gave to the currency would then have been nullified if gold had a much lower value elsewhere in the world. Now, back to Bitcoin. You could make an argument that there is a psychological illusion of scarcity because some people can feel good about owning at least one whole Bitcoin. Also, it can be more satisfying to own a coin worth tens of thousands instead of a hundred million coins, each worth a tiny fraction of a cent. These factors could in theory create some extra buying pressure as people scramble to secure their share of the pie. However, the effects of this are not long-lasting because it is already becoming an inevitable fact that the vast majority of the population will not be able to own a whole Bitcoin. In the past, YouTube video titles and thumbnails were trying to convince people that they only need to own one Bitcoin to be set for the future. Now, these video titles have changed to 0.5 or even 0.1 BTC. This again shows the illusion of scarcity, as people adjust to owning smaller and smaller fractions of a Bitcoin. There is another form of scarcity though, that could theoretically affect Bitcoin a lot more. Critics of Bitcoin argue that there is an endless array of cryptocurrencies, so Bitcoin must not have any inherent value, because some other coin could just replace it one day. In theory, the overall abundance of cryptocurrencies could affect the value of Bitcoin, if they became serious contenders and people actually chose to store their long-term holdings in those other cryptocurrencies. However, there are major problems with this assumption. First of all, there is only one Bitcoin. People seriously underestimate the first mover advantage that Bitcoin has. Bitcoin has been the king of cryptocurrencies since its inception, similar to how gold has been the king of precious metals for thousands of years. Therefore, you don't see that many people park their long-term wealth in platinum and palladium compared to gold. 
similar to how hedge funds are not allocating the majority of their crypto holdings into Shiba Inu. No offense to Shiba Inu. Even if someone created a quote-unquote scarcer cryptocurrency with let's say 10 or even 1 million coins, it would still be very difficult for that coin to reach the single unit value of Bitcoin, let alone Bitcoin's total market capitalization. There are many people saying that Bitcoin is dead and that the quick gains can only come from other cryptocurrencies now. In the original tale of Pinocchio, a fox and a cat tried to trick Pinocchio by telling him to bury his gold coins in the field of miracles, saying that they would grow into a tree bearing thousands of gold coin fruits. The fact of the matter is that most cryptocurrencies are similar scams that promise quick riches while the developers dump their coins on unsuspecting victims. Thus, most altcoins are constantly being replaced by new ones while Bitcoin remains. If anything, Bitcoin is most similar to that gold coin bearing tree because it takes years of patience to see the fruits of your labor. Another criticism hurled at Bitcoin is that its distribution of wealth is very uneven. So why not create another coin or a fork to fix that? First of all, as early Bitcoin contributor Hal Finney says, if you create a reset, you can do it again and again, so the only possible option is to never do it. In addition, a reset would not really change anything long term because wealth would naturally become unevenly distributed once again. By the way, since I have to mention the term power law at least once in the video, the distribution of wealth is also roughly governed by a power law known as the Pareto Principle. This is also known as the 80-20 rule, according to which 80% of the overall productivity of the population comes from just 20% of the people. Since net worth and productivity are often, but not always, linked, this also explains the countless examples of uneven distribution of wealth throughout history. So what else besides the first mover advantage gives Bitcoin its value? Well, there are many answers to that question, so I will just give some quick examples. For instance, Bitcoin is governed by clearly understood and pre-programmed rules. Its rate of inflation is ever decreasing and will end at 21 million coins in more than 100 years. Meaning that if you store your funds in Bitcoin, you won't have to worry about some guy at a printing press eroding your life's work away because he wants to fuel the military or get rid of some national debt. The original amount of envisioned Bitcoins might not have been so important in the grand scheme of things, but that's definitely not the case when it comes to the total money supply's rate of expansion. Also, Bitcoin's blockchain is the most secure, and it would be extremely difficult to take over with a 51% attack due to the armies of miners all around the world. Finally, I would like to end on a note that Bitcoin's code is simple yet robust, and despite years of attempts to find weaknesses to exploit, no hacker has ever managed to succeed at this. Even when corporations tried to band together to force a hard fork to be the dominant chain, people voted against this with their nodes, so their efforts were thwarted. Therefore, thanks to years of flawless uptime, Bitcoin has earned the trust of millions of fans all over the world, and the network effect of Bitcoin remains unparalleled. This is Saverio from Quantanami speaking, and thanks for watching.